Speaker start. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to weekly SIG meeting for Monday, 17th June 2024. Uh, we have a couple of items on the agenda. Uh, Marco. Uh, oh, yeah. So I was wondering, given the amount of time that apparently uh, Kevin had to spend in the last weeks for cutting new VPA releases, shouldn't this be a thing that CI does for us, like on the click of a button? Or is there any like reason why we decided to not have this? Um, like if we don't have a good reason to not do this, then I guess uh, we should make this into a CI job. Uh, in terms of, uh, do you mean in terms of publishing images, uh, etc.? Um, yeah, like building them. Uh, so currently, if you click on the release process, everything happens yeah. on like one person's machine, right? Uh, you yeah. build the images, you publish the images, you tag the Git repo, you do all the stuff. Um, and I guess this should be probably a two-step thing, like building a release candidate, uploading the images to the staging repository or whatever, and then like promoting it as a second step or something. I'm not sure what the usual practice is. Um, I don't have much experience with the other Kubernetes projects, but uh, this is how I would imagine it to be done. So I think the the reason at the moment is that it is, uh, so the ability to push and manage images to the staging um, repo, it's it's governed by a list of people. Um, so if you, under the permissions section, there's a link to groups.yaml. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's how the permission is done. Um, so it's done via that setup which then you can use um, the G-authenticate G against it using G-Cloud, and that's how the permissions are managed. I'm not sure if other um, projects... I, my assumption has always been that other projects are using that same management to allow individual people um, to authenticate against G-Cloud, and I'm not sure how easily transferable um, slash secure it would be to have CI authenticating against gcloud using in, individual um, user credentials effectively. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that like all Kubernetes projects are doing it in the same way? Like I, do, I don't know for sure. That was my yeah. assumption and that's probably a conversation we can have. I don't know if anyone else on the call might know either way. I'm thinking potentially Jack. No is strong. Can can you restate the question more simply? Uh, do you know of uh, other projects release processes, whether they are all dependent on effectively individual developers authenticating against um, staging repos and pushing up images from their local laptops or whether there's setups from people pushing images to staging from CI. So the way that the SIG cluster lifecycle projects do this like Cluster API and various providers is a hybrid of that. So it's mostly the second, but it's not fully automated. And so there, there are things like where you uh, will sign something either on a dev VM or on your laptop, um, push a signed commit, wait for some CI job to respond to that. And then you'll go into a PR and manually like approve it. And then the next phase, does that help to answer? Okay, so you're saying that the actual building of the image happens in CI. That's right. I, I am saying that correct. Okay. I mean, that's, that would I think be... that's important for integrity. Right. And currently, this is not the case for VPA. So this would be a huge step forward already. Um, okay. 
Cool. And I know and, some folks that could potentially lean in. I can I can reach out to some folks who have set this up in sequence life cycle and see if they'd be willing to partner with auto scaling. Yeah, that would be nice. I'd be very interested in understanding like how people usually do this and how we how we can achieve this. Cool. Great. Um I'm curious how you're doing it in the CA side. Is it the same process, like build locally? And yeah, okay, so yeah. we could maybe do two birds with one stone here. Yeah, absolutely. Who's owning this from the from the Sagato scaling side? Is it you, Guy? Or Marco, are you volunteering to lead? Um, so I don't have any permissions to like do any of these things manually. I'm not sure I'm the right person to uh, lead this from auto scanning site. Yeah, if it, uh, particularly if it's gonna require any changes to groups, et cetera, I'm probably easiest to run it all through me. Okay, cool. So it sounds like we have a candidate for a guinea pig and VPA. I assume other, other build projects could probably benefit from this additional automation. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's CA, maybe pick VPA. add-on resizer. Awesome. We can make, is VPA the right thing to start with? The easiest? Add on resizer is probably the lowest risk, but equally, it's like we don't. Yeah, that makes, that, that makes sense. VPA is obviously integral to basically yeah. Kubernetes. Okay, cool. I'll see if I can recruit some folks. Cool. Thanks. All right, then I guess uh, next topic is also one of mine. Um, that's mm, a bit more into the details of VPA, where I'm like curious how people deal with a special situation that can come up. Like workload can become unschedulable on your nodes because VPA just pushes requests too high, right? Uh, VPA doesn't know about the physical limits on the VMs you're using, and it just looks at utilization and recommends values, and this may end up as it doesn't fit on any of your nodes anymore. So, like, how are people dealing with this? Um, there's, like, a few different approaches, and I'm curious on, uh, like, if anybody has some experiences with this. Like, one is, for example, you can set some value for max allowed, if you like know your VM sizes, uh, you can just prevent VPA from raising requests too high. Um, but uh, if you don't know your VM sizes and you allow like the owners of the clusters to choose VMs that they think are a good fit, uh, how do you do it? Um, and if, for example, that workload is critical to run, you just want to throw more resources at it, right? You just want to, you, you don't want your workload to run into constant oom kills or whatever. Um, so like another idea I came up with was like, do you just have a very big VM scaled down, uh, like in a separate pool, scaled down to zero uh, and use a priority expander to like bring this up on demand or I don't know. Maybe people have other ideas or like um, other solutions for this, but I would be very interested in like how this is done. Or maybe that's a very special problem that nobody else has, but I doubt that. <laughs> I have definitely heard it mentioned before. Um, I, I think it might have been Datadog mentioning it. Um, I don't know if we have anyone from Datadog on call. I don't think so. No. Um, um, Mark, I just, just context for your question. Are you looking to solve this problem in your use of VPA, or are you thinking that this is a worthwhile feature to add to the VPA? 
Um, so ideally, this would be solved in VPA upstream as some way to solve that issue. Um, I guess this is already a problem that people solve one way or the other right now. So I'd be interested in like how people do this. You know? But um, you're right. I mean, the idea is to solve this in VPA if we can. Cool. We, this is, um, and my company, we don't have a heavy use of the, the VPA. Um, our VPA is, it looks over 21 days of, of data. So it's, it's more of a slow and steady increase and decrease. Uh, but this this is definitely a concern which we haven't yet hit. So it would be nice to have safeguards. So I think it's if we can find a clean solution, I think this would be great to add. But mm -hmm. I just don't know what that clean solution looks like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I I found a project uh, where people like built in some dynamic mechanism to like try to find out on which worker pool your component will be scheduled and then like find the container where you want to put the highest max amount value on and so on. But then this seems like CA re-implementing cube scheduler in order to find like the right spot and stuff. Right. So I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe your A is a good idea or like a solution in place. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I could maybe just like anecdotally talk about Google's implementation of VPA here. It actually um, interacts with cluster autoscaler. So prior to evicting a pod, it will go ping cluster autoscaler and say, hey, can you handle this new, these new resource requests and CA mm -hmm. responds yes or no, basically. So you, you kind of build this like interaction between the two before you do something bad, like evict the pod and it can't come back up. Now, I don't know the mechanics of whether it can figure out if the pod can be scheduled. Um, if, like you said, there's limitation in the, the hardware or something like that, I, I'm not actually sure if it checks that. Um, but I do know that we do this check prior to evicting. So, you know, maybe oh. we think about using the pod admission uh, interface there. At least that's what we do. Um, part of it's documented. I was just looking this up and mm -hmm. I can link it in the notes, but. Um, Oh, that cool. could be one way to do it. Yeah, that's interesting. So like in the end, you don't actually care if the recommendation is too high. You just prevent eviction from happening. But then you like you also need to take care that admission controller doesn't update a pod's recommendation in case it gets recreated due to other reasons, right? Yes, that's a really good question. Huh. The, I guess you almost want that limitation on the recommender so it doesn't recommend too high as opposed to the unless the admission controller can do a skip I don't know mm -hmm. um, Ray were you saying that the, the Google solution the, the VPA is talking to the cluster autoscale can in, in terms of a open source solution can we assume that the cluster autoscale is running I'm assuming we can't. Or, or if you want this feature, you have to have the cluster order scaler, maybe. Oh, that's a it's, tough question. Are people running yeah. Kubernetes clusters without cluster auto scaler in place? Carpenter. <laughs> I don't. I mean, they could yeah, be okay, using that's fair. Carpenter. Okay. Yeah, and this is this is there's there's currently an ongoing discussion i'm assuming this is the this is using provisioning request api right mm -hmm. um and there's yeah this is currently there's a, a current um ongoing discussion about what what apis like that look like for carpenter and whether we can have the same api between the two um or not um so potentially it might end up needing an implementation for the two different projects slightly differently if we don't align on a common API between the two. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, but, but that's already quite quite interesting. Also something that we can look into um, for for open source. I mean there's nothing really special or like Google internal in there, right? It's just, okay. Yeah, cool. Thanks for the insights. Um, 
I'll, I'll yeah. dig out the docs um, around what we're talking about in terms of between the two pro, uh, two cluster auto scaling projects um, mm -hmm. as well around these APIs, um, just in case it's of interest. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for mentioning it. Okay, cool. Thanks. And uh, that was all we had on the agenda. Is there anything else anyone wants to raise this week? Awesome. In that case, thanks very much, everyone, for attending. See you all next week. Bye.